Let us worship God. Blessing to you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine, giver of bread. Blessing to you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has called us and sanctified us with the supper of your Son, our Savior. In love you have redeemed us, even in these days of solemn joy, even this day of the bread and cup, a gathering to remember. be seated. Friends, good evening and welcome to this Monday Thursday service. We gather together uh, remembering the Last Supper, the night when Jesus established this sacrament with his disciples. 
The message that we hear tonight comes from the Gospel of John, and the Gospel of John has a unique understanding of this night. It has to do with the centrality, in particular, of the love of the church. May we gather together in that spirit of love as Christ invites us here, and as Christ invites us here, then all are welcome at this table when we share the sacrament this evening. We'll be coming down the center aisles, if you would please, and then returning on the side aisles if you're, uh, if you're able. Um, if you are not able to come forward, there will be elders that will come and serve you where you are. Friends, again, welcome to this evening uh, as we do so in the name of Jesus Christ. With full confidence in the grace of God, let us confess together. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, though you have bound yourself to us, we have not bound ourselves to you. We do not love you fully or love one another as you command. In Jesus, you serve us freely, but we withhold ourselves from others. We confess our betrayal and desertion. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, the bread of life, the vine from which we grow in grace. Amen. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you, we are all forgiven. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. Believe and share the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. The peace of Christ be with you. Please share the peace of Christ with those you are seated near. Let us pray. God of Passover and Eucharist, we praise you for your presence. We rejoice that Jesus invites us to the perpetual supper that we might remember what he did for us. We will move from upper room to the streets of our city. Help us to remember that we go as your servants. Keep us faithful, remove our timidity. But we remember that you left the upper room to go to the cross and enter into your suffering. Make us aware of those who suffer in our world, the ill and the infirm, the hungry and the victims of war or violence. Help us to be a part of your answer to prayers that our troubled world might be healed. These and all other prayers that you would have us bring, we offer before your throne. In Christ's name, amen. If the ushers would please come forward. Jesus offered himself for us, so let us offer that with which God has blessed us for the advancement of God's purposes on earth and the mission of the church and the world.
gospel reading this Monday, Thursday evening comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, selected verses. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. During supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and that he was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, and he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table, and he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. And after saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. When he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God had been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going... You cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of John tells the story a little differently than the others. John is the last of the four Gospels to be written. They'd had 60 years to reflect on what Jesus meant among them, 60 years to discern what it meant to be a believer of Jesus. They had thought about, tried, and tested their beliefs And so John gives a distinctive presentation of the identity of Jesus. In the Gospel of John, it is very clear that Jesus is not a victim. Rather, Jesus, as the Gospel says, is the word, the way, the life, the light, the truth, the door. All these dynamic, moving images that have a power to them. The understanding of Jesus in John reflects that before, during, and after this night of gathering with the disciples and Jesus' arrest, that Jesus has power. For everything that happens to Jesus, including the cross, there is still this distinct impression that somehow Jesus is in charge. It's power, but it's a different kind of power. You see it in him washing the disciples' feet. He's not humiliated to do that. He's humble 
but not humiliated. There's a world of difference between those two ideas. Humiliation is something that someone does to you to degrade you. But being humble, that's what you choose to be, what you choose to be. Being humble is a strength of character. Jesus is still teacher and still Lord, but he shows this humility, this humbleness that reveals the power that he has. Throughout John, Jesus is not powerless. He reveals a different kind of power in a great variety of ways. When a demonic spirit takes over Judas with plans to betray Jesus, it is Jesus who looks at Judas and says, hurry up and do what you are going to do. Jesus is still in charge. He instructs Judas to do his deed because Jesus is stronger than any betrayer. And after his arrest, Jesus identifies himself. The soldiers come for him and say, are you who we are looking for? And he says, I am, which is a code word in the Hebrew for God. And the entire company of soldiers bow. Jesus has a strength in front of the soldiers who have come to arrest him and kill him. Jesus' strength confuses Peter. Peter takes out his sword to fight when Jesus tells Peter to sheath his weapon. He shows greater strength, the strength of the peacemaker who knows that what is about to happen to him is what God needs him to do, and he will do what God needs him to do. That's strength. Tomorrow we'll hear about Pilate Pilate, who can't figure out what truth is. Pilate, the, 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 the ruler over the area, can't figure out what truth is, and Jesus shows him what truth is. And in the Gospel of John, when it comes time to go to the crucifixion, Jesus bears his own cross. There isn't anyone who helps him. The Gospel of John makes it clear. Jesus has power. Before Jesus dies, he instructs his disciples. And that instruction is the center place of this table this evening. This table is about the disciples being given the power of Jesus, which is to say the disciples are given the strength to love. The word glory is used a number of times. The glory means Jesus going to the cross. It's a self-sacrificing love. And that's a glory that those who follow Jesus have, the glory of being able to give themselves. It's interesting. At the Last Supper, according to the Gospel of John, Jesus does not say, love the world. Jesus does not even say, love your neighbor. In the Gospel of John, he says to the believers, in other words, to the church, love one another. Love one another. It's not that Jesus restricts love only to the church. It's just that he understands that the love starts in the church. It starts among the disciples. Sometimes it's more real, isn't it, to love those who are nearby because you see them more clearly and sometimes it's harder to love them, but that's what he calls his followers to do. The question is, love one another, have you loved them? Have you loved one another? Have you loved them with the passion, with the self-sacrificial love that Jesus has shown? The disciples, in other words, the church, is not about a biological family, but the church is a spiritual body, one body. There may be all sorts of diversity there as there was with the disciples, but it's still one body. And you would no less hold back from giving to them than you would cut off the circulation of your own. 
love one another. You are connected. Take care of the body. Take care of Christ's body. Stay connected. If we want to stay connected with Jesus, then we practice loving one another, feeding one another, forgiving one another, sharing grace with one another, love one another. On the way to the cross, Jesus sees his mother. She will now be a widow, powerless, alone. Uh, Jesus looks at the disciple whom he loved and and, and, and says to him, Now she's your mother. Treat her that way. Love one another. Take care of one another because you are one body. You hear in this passage how unified Jesus felt with God Jesus and God were one, but Jesus also felt unified with his disciples. They were one as he is one with the Father. Love, unity, marks of the church. And when you do that, somehow you experience the kingdom of heaven already breaking in. The community that abides in Christ's love enacts concrete service as marks and signs of Christ's new life. They're so free. See how they love one another is what they said of the early church. It's Jesus who establishes that, and he establishes that at this supper when he tells them what life in him is about. A mutual love where we get to experience something of the kingdom of heaven now. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples at Emmaus, 
He took bread, blessed, and broke it. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all those who trust in him to share at the feast at which he is the host. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Creator God, out of your great love sent your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Blessed is Jesus Christ, who dwelt among us full of grace and truth, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, opening blind eyes, breaking bread with outcasts and sinners, proclaiming the good news of your kingdom to the poor and needy. He gave himself for the life of the world, winning for us victory over death. Now seated at your right hand, he leads us to eternal life and he will come again to make all things new. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Now, gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Make us one with all who share in this feast, Fulfill your eternal purpose in us and in all the world. As one body, we pray together as Jesus teaches his disciples, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this remembering me. The same way after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is the cup of the new, new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord until he comes again in glory. Let us keep the feast.
As we go out, I charge you to remember the center of the meaning of this meal. Love one another. As Jesus has commanded us, love one another. May the love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit bind us together as one with Christ the Lord, now and always. Amen. Amen.